Last time on How To, we analyzed our simple battery test capture as it related to the goal of the test, performing a quick check of the battery's health. But there is yet more to see in this simple pattern. Sticking with our U-scope for now, let's take a look at another battery test capture and see if there are any other little diagnostic nuggets hiding in there. Let's start with inrush voltage. Do you remember what inrush voltage is? It's the microsecond load on the battery when everything just started moving. It's a reflection of the amount of current demand the starter placed on the battery. And we'll see that again when we add an amp probe to our arsenal. Now focus on the squiggles you see right after the inrush voltage was recorded. What do you think is causing the fluctuations in the load that the starter is placing on the battery as it cranks the engine over? And notice too that it's occurring just before the engine starts. Think about how the engine operates. As each piston moves towards top dead center on its compression stroke, the pressure above it continues to build. And that rise in pressure makes it harder for the starter to move the piston up and through the TDC point. And remember what I said before, scopes are able to sample at millions of samples per second. So does it make sense that the scope is able to capture the rise and fall of the load that the starter is placing on the battery as each piston moves through its compression stroke? And that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing the impact on the battery's voltage as the increase and decreases in starter load occur. Could this be a valuable diagnostic test? You bet it can, and it's called relative compression. It's a comparison of the pressure build in each cylinder relative to one another. And while it's normally done using starter current, it can be done just as accurately with battery voltage. Unfortunately, we can't easily see it on the U-scope even if we alter the time and voltage settings. Many of the most popular scopes in use in the automotive field have a zoom feature that makes this relatively easy to address. But for now, we're going to have to figure out a way to make the U-scope work for us. We're going to do that using a concept called AC coupling. What that means is that we're going to remove the DC voltage component from the signal that we captured, leaving just the AC signal behind for our viewing pleasure. On many scopes, it's a feature you can toggle on or off with the scope controls, but the U-scope uses an actual filter that is placed in line with the positive meter clamp and lead. Now we need to adjust the scope settings to accommodate the filter signal. We can leave the time base alone for the moment and focus on adjusting the voltage settings. Since there is no DC component, we'll need to use a voltage in a very small range. Let's see what happens when we reduce the voltage scale from two volts per division to half a volt per division. Now, do you remember the difference between setting your scope up by division or by sweep? What is the total sweep now on our voltage scale? And what about our trigger? What adjustments do you think we have to make there? We can still use a single trigger and the rising slope, but an 11 volt trigger level just won't work. We need to bring it down to the scale we're using. How about setting it at 0.20 volts? As I said in our first visit together, you want to consider what type of test that you're making. In this case, we're trying to perform a test that will show us what the compression pressures in each cylinder are relative to one another. Now, if you were going to perform a conventional compression pressure test with a mechanical gauge, how would you perform that test? Well, one of the first things you would do is disable the engine so it couldn't start, either disabling fuel or using the clear flood mode in order to prevent its running during the test. And the second thing you do would hold the throttle wide open to get the maximum pressure ratings that you could. That's the same thing we have to do here. With the scope settings finalized and the car prepared for the test, it's time to crank the engine and capture our next waveform. Here's an example of what your waveform should look like with these scope settings. Not yet the easiest thing to decipher, is it? And while the U-scope may not have a zoom feature, we can manipulate the time and voltage settings to zoom in on the waveform. 
Here we've gone from half a volt per division to a tenth of a volt per division. And the highs and lows are more apparent. We can also use time to help us see a more clear pattern. Here we've reduced the time from 500 milliseconds per division to 100 milliseconds per division. So here's a little brain teaser for you. Do you remember the 2020 rule I discussed? Well, part of that rule related to the time settings on your scope. We were looking for a 20 millisecond per division or a 200 millisecond sweep. This amount of time allows us to capture two full revolutions of the engine while the engine's running at an idle speed of roughly 750 RPM. Based on that, how many revolutions do you think we caught in this capture? Look closely at the low voltage points on our waveform. Why am I focused on the low voltage spikes? Doesn't that indicate when the greatest amount of current draw was required from the battery? And that in turn is affected by the load on the starter motor? And that in turn is affected by each cylinder as it nears top dead center of its compression stroke. Granted, it can be a bit confusing to look at the drops. That's why many of us prefer to look at the peaks. And we can do that on the scope using the invert function. This function simply turns the readings upside down in a mirror image. So now the pattern goes from looking like this to looking like this. Now it's easy to see that once the engine has started, the peaks are relatively uniform, that is at about the same height, which is telling me that the relative compression between the cylinders is pretty darn close and I don't suspect there are any mechanical issues with this engine. Now, if I saw one that was missing and occurring at the same spot each and every time, or even one that was just low and repetitive, then I would suspect that there's a problem with that cylinder and perhaps performing a conventional compression test may be necessary. Well, we sure have covered a lot today, haven't we? I've given you lots of things to play with until the next time we get together. For example, I've shown you how you can use time and voltage and alter those settings to zoom in or out of the pattern that you've captured. I've shown you the invert function, and we've talked about AC coupling. And I've also added a new test to your arsenal, the relative compression test. But we aren't quite done with that one yet. You're going to have to come back for How To 19, available January 21st. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you enable notifications so you'll know when the next how-to is ready for you to watch. And you won't miss any of the other great content that I have planned for you in 2021. So until then, thanks for watching. See you next time.